Hello, welcome back to my ATM Gravitas 2 Let's Play series. Uh, my name is Cthulhu, or Monster, and I play on Pilpo's Patreon server. I am enjoying being here on the top of my uh, workshop, and this last, uh, I guess, in between episodes, I've been doing a lot of cleanup on my base, uh, Gravitas chores, and then identifying a little bit more about how the mineral tree grows. I am really excited to have some ideas on that, um, as well as I've restocked a bunch of circuits and prep for a, a big push on a build. So I think this uh, is going to kind of just be like an update of a few different things. I've uh, made the fancy Coke oven, which I still cannot pronounce. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just kind of um, some prep for more as we go. Unfortunately, I'm going to be recording the intro and the outro in winter, so this is going to get pretty blinding. So I apologize if uh, it's a bit bright in this one. I might be switching between shaders and not shaders. Uh, so yeah, this is what I was up to today and and the last few days. <laughs> so one of the things that I run into and I think is always important is you can always walk away from a project for a while. Uh, so this is the roof I've been working on back here on this um, this side of the workshop. And I just haven't been able to figure out how I wanted this to look. I thought it was becoming a lot of the same color. So I've just sort of uh, been ignoring it as a project. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, um, it should get done. Um, but I'm thinking I want some type of different type of block here. And I was trying to identify it. I'm thinking maybe I'll use this blackwood, uh, these blackwood um, trapdoors again, just to tie it into an other aspects of my build. Um, I don't want to go too heavy in one color um, in each spot, but I also, I don't really mind doing that. It just comes down to what's easiest. All right, I'm going to work on getting my fancy Coke oven in place here. So taking a quick look at this multi-block, um, it is a three tall by four long. And I started to put some of the pieces I know I'm going to need here up. And I noticed uh, one of them was the 16th, uh, Cupro nickel blocks, uh, coil blocks, and I actually have upgraded the blocks that are within my EBF to the um, canthal coil blocks. So I'm actually going to use these because I already have them. So let's lay this out just to start. And taking a look at the graphic, the middle is hollow there. So I got to remember to leave that there. All right, so let's start working on the other pieces now that I have this one in place. All right, so I'm going to work on the pyrolease oven, and um, I'm just going to kind of go into a little montage versus trying to talk you through it. It's going to be a lot of crafting. All right, here we go. Well, just in case. So I have the maintenance hatch now. So let's take a look at what was needed for this multi-block. So I believe I've done this whole run here through the maintenance hatch. So maintenance, muffler, 
all these. I got the uh, crepper nickel coil blocks, so I just need these ULV machine casings. These are a lower tier, so I just don't want to make extra if I don't need them. So it looks like I have everything that I would need to put up this oven. I'm going to put these extra circuits back in my circuit box, just right under my assembler. And yeah, let's see what this looks like. All right. So looking at this, the way I like to do this is I take a look at the multi-block and I identify what's in the corner. So I got my maintenance hatch here and these two are outputs. So the output with the orange and orange versus the blue, that is the item output. So this is items and this is fluid. So I got in fluid, out fluid, in items, out items. All right, and those do match what you see when you're seeing the automatic outputs here. Um, you'll see that items are orange here. And say if I have one that has fluids like this one, you'll see that the fluids, if I wanted them to come out, say this side, would be blue. So they do correlate pretty well. All right, so let's do this. Okay, once again, I just like to remind myself of the picture. All right, so we're gonna do our hatches, input, output. And these are the items. So my input, my output, I need to put in um, almost a little cross of the UV boxes here. I got the actual oven panel here in the middle. Maintenance was up at the top there. We can put that there and now we need the fluid pieces. So we got the fluid input which is on this side and the fluid output which is on that side. And now we just need to fill the back which looking at it, um, when we look at the multi-block, it looks like the mufflers in the middle and then the electric are in the two corners here. And I have found out that the electric can be adjusted as needed. So what I'll probably do is do them slightly off here. Um, well, maybe not. I won't do it this time. So I, I've been doing it slightly off so that I can add like a battery buffer or whatnot there. Just be able to access a little bit more from the cabling standpoint. But in this case, that's not the case. So that's there. I'm going to put a wrench on here so that it's facing the right direction. <laughs> And yeah, so this should form. Let's see here. Lights are on. Looks pretty cool. It's idling. Processing speed, 75%. I believe that's because I'm using the copper, the copper, copper nickel, copper nickel here. So yeah, cool. We got this oven. Wow. I didn't, I didn't really I had everything for this. Okay. So what I'm really interested in here is when we look at this oven recipes that could if we look at the recipes that can go in here, we got 12 of them right now. I do know that there is going to be some work, I believe, on getting. Uh, there's a little bug right now that the terra firma uh, craft logs are have were removed out of here. So luckily, we have the mineral tree, so we can actually use that on our end. Um, additionally, we could use like the biochaff to make biomass in here. But I kind of would like to look at the progress to getting um benzene but that's not what i need to do right now <laughs> so let's just take a quick look at what we're seeing steam and coal actually gets coal gas that's kind of cool all right so what i'm probably going to look at first is about getting that mineral tree up and uh getting a tree farm for that and that is going to be a little bit unique but yeah there we go we got the pot the the coke oven i do need to give it some power and it's looking like it's going to pull a hundred, uh, pretty strong on the uh, power. I am going to check basically the recipes to see how much it needs for each of them. So this is where you can see like, you know, this one needs MV power. Um, and while I did use LV, it's just like make sure that the, the addition of power going there can handle it. So just doing my great tech chores. My goal is to try to get this uh, wall of projects and processing that I haven't completed uh, sent through this. <laughs> a weird little synth list, but uh, put through the machines because I think that would be great to see. So one of the things that I run into and I think is always important is you can always walk away from a project for a while. Uh, so this is the roof I've been working on back here on this um, 
this side of the workshop. And I just haven't been able to figure out how I wanted this to look. I thought it was becoming a lot of the same color. So I've just sort of uh, been ignoring it as a project. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, um, it should get done. Um, but I'm thinking I want some type of different type of block here. And I was trying to identify it. I'm thinking maybe I'll use this blackwood, uh, these blackwood um, trapdoors again, just to tie it into uh, other aspects of my build. All right. I am going to get a roof on this thing. Now that the EBF's been fixed, um, the snow is causing an issue here with me running this. So definitely knew it was going to do that, but now it's time to address it. You know, gosh, let me check to see how many times, how many hours I've been playing. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't had the EBF the whole time, but I always like to kind of remind myself of like, oh dear, yep, 13.9 days. You know, as one does. 13.9 days. Okay, so I put another 30, a little under 34 hours back on here. And one thing I've decided is I'm actually going to pull the oxygen connection for my polyethylene system up here out of being connected to my EBF. Sorry, it's blindingly bright. I'm going to turn off the shaders. I prefer it with shaders, but I'm going to turn that off mainly because uh, I'm going to do a maintenance access here on the stairwell area. And I'm actually condensing this area in inward. So I'm just going to uh, put myself a little um, great system here. Oh, not that one. <laughs> great. <laughs> it's not that great. Um, yeah, I'm a nerd. But uh, what I'm planning on doing here is just getting a... Um, taking off the oxygen connection I have here and making sure I have an oxygen uh, void here. So I have a trash can and I have a pump. So I'm just going to put the pump here and check this pump to make sure I put a, a item filter on it my, well, a fluid filter. My fluid filter is only okaying um, oxygen gas, so this should now have all my oxygen gas voiding. Excellent. And that way, um, my nitrogen will keep going, but I won't be worried too much about the rest. See, so yeah, I have a little space right here. I should probably put some sort of safety endeavor. That seems like something that would be installed. And I'm going to put it up against this side, because... That's the part that makes me smile. Fall in a hole uh, that I've been trying to make so no others won't fall into. <laughs> it's always fun when you purposely do that. All right, we're just going to bust out back into my storage. Not my storage, my maintenance area over here. All right. We don't have to worry too much about surface spawn, so I'll see if there's any monsters in there. But for the moment, this just keeps it from falling in there, but with little decorative element. And, you know, it's it's nothing too serious. It's just having fun. And um, the details, maybe they're not going to be exactly what I want, but they'll at least be something that I can, you know, confidently be like, okay, well, I'm not too worried about this area anymore. Maintenance looks all right. I don't just have a hole there. Um, but that's just how I like to play the game. So no obligation for anyone to, to, to do similar. So I got some base cleanup done. I think I finished the back of this workshop. There's a few minor tweaks that I'm going to need to do, uh, especially in the second floor of the uh, workshop over here, uh, because I just, I don't have those machines yet ready. I am looking at uh, expanding here into my next build. I was planning on doing a warehouse or a storage unit, but I'm kind of leaning maybe to like small create passive farms and mainly ones that will get me create pieces more than anything. Um, this is basically coming up from wanting to make a mineral tree uh, farm. There is the greenhouse with Greg Tech, which I'm super excited about, but I kind of want something that runs a little bit more passively, so less energy based. And if I could do that, then I can use that for um, some benzene. And who knows uh, with whether or not I stick to pure, pure oil or not. For the moment, oil and diesel is great. But I do want more mineral trees, and mineral is burnable within the fancy coke oven. Oop, one moment. I sneeze a lot, so I wanted to make sure I cut that out. Uh, 
another thing that's inspiring the desire for create tools is I do want some wet bricks down here. Uh, not wet bricks. That would be weird. Um, I do want a brick floor, I'm thinking, for some of these industrial spaces. And loamy bricks are a little bit tough when you look at the bricks here. Um, uh, mud brick. Oop, it's not looking in the right spot. Okay, but yeah, with mud brick, you actually have to kind of lay them out uh, to build these. So it can be a bit tough to make. You can, um, you know, you can make them by hand or with create, you know, using um, mixers, which is great. Same with making the actual mud with mixers, but uh, drying it, I'm not seeing an option other than currently um, laying it out in the sun. So I'm going to test that with create as well, because I think that would be a nice block, um, especially in my sort of uh, early industrial base build. So I am testing here some mineral uh, tree growing. Uh, one thing I learned is that they need to grow on a cross of dirt, uh, but I'm testing to see like the well, how close I can get with a build here. So I needed to check my um, machine down here, and I have this little trapdoor back here that I use as a quick access. So I'm able to scoot down here and see what's going on behind the wiring. Uh, <laughs> I always feel like a little mouse doing this, but I was just keeping an eye on my steam here. It looks all right. All right, I put 320 in here, and it looks like I got 676 crushed mag uh, magnetite ore. So, yeah, this HV uh, macerator is amazing. All right, we're in a situation where I think using the bowls is a prime point here. So I have some garlic that only has three days left. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just fill the entirety of a salad here to make as many garlic salads as I can um, for nutrients and that way if you look at the time I have three days I now have two months for this you need to have at least have a minimum of three in here so um, these two I'll just do right now so Kay was on earlier and we're on the same, same team so oh my gosh I have a lot of stuff I'm excited. This will be great. I'm going to put this into my storage. It looks like the ore washer gave me another 216 iron dust. Nice. All right, so yeah, a little quick tour of what changed up. I did take off the back two doors here, door to trap door. This was just a little too dark in, at night, and it just made me try to figure out what was going on. Um, I have hooked up the, the fancy coke oven here with just a quick steam turbine and two more. Um, two more solar here just because I wanted to make it kind of independent. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it here just due to the fact that if I do investigate benzene I want to get stuff to it. But I think it could be cool too as well if I put my benzene up there. Uh, benzene production up that way. Um, I did do some finishing here on this back section uh, which you probably saw in the update um, my or a little bit earlier. Uh, I love this little maintenance room. It's I think it's super cute. Uh, if you crouch, you can get to the other side of it, but it allows me to check on the batteries. And then I really enjoy the fact that um, it is my secret roof access as well. You know, it's always hard to get on roofs, and I hate leaving scaffolding in places. Um, I really enjoy this uh, fun uh, chimney that I put in. It is using something that, you know, the, the mods gave us some campfires for aesthetic purposes, not for design. So those can't be built in uh, this pack. Uh, so you'd have to get OP privileges to get those installed. But um, I'm okay with that. It's just aesthetics and hopefully don't steal, take them back. I did a light trim around the edges of this wall with, uh, with the frame slab edges as, long as, as well as in here with the goal that even though this is like a mess of a roof, at least it has some common uh, di common denominators. There we are. Oh dear, it's math again with me. <laughs> and uh, this is the shape of the building so far back here. I thought this shape, I don't want to escalate like immediately into a giant buildings. Um, with some of my investigation into the mineral tree farm, however, this might end up just being straight storage on like earlier, just due to the fact that uh, I want to do this like bell jar system. Um, I did try to do a traditional uh, windmill farm. I had to take the deployers off, and this 
won't work. I think they're just too close to each other because a mineral tree, what I've learned, needs to have uh, one, not only a cross here of dirt to grow on, but it also needs a free space all the way out. So you can't have any um, tool, not tools, anything within uh, pretty much what seems to be a five by five square of it other than other mineral trees. Um, it's not perfectly understandable, but that did make it a little bit of a challenge because, you know, deployers, typically this spins around. Um, that spinning wasn't allowing these to spawn. So um, I couldn't just put a deployer and a saw and, you know, a windmill to go around, which if you do want a simple windmill, not windmill farm, a simple um, tree farm. I've, I've done this in the past on this, uh, this section. Actually, I redid my... Um, what were those called? I had mechanical crafters here, so I reverted it back when I first got the mineral trees. And I forgot completely about the cross, even though that was one of the biggest things in my first episode, that the cross of dirt was so important. Um, but there are so many different ways you can do tree farms. Um, one of them, you know, you could do this, the twirl in a circle one, but then you also can do like what, oops, what Kay did over here. He's using a train actually and um or you could use pistons or gantry um gantry uh cables which is really cool i personally don't have too much um preference either way but yeah k has a train station basically set up with a blaze on it and he has this massive train <laughs> this massive one you can see you know that he's got all these uh deployers on it and this is set to, what's the word for this? This is set to run with a train schedule. And I think right now he has it turned off. So if I wanted to control this, you know, I can move forward and cut one. But uh, due to the sheer size of this, when it does, um, oops, when it does go off, go, it could be a little bit uh, terrifying. So I'm just going to go backwards here and uh, get to this train stop. All right. Oh, no, I want to go backwards. Not very good at driving trains yet, as you can see. But I think this is a really nice way uh, that he did this, but I don't necessarily want to do the same um, just because I don't want to grow that much. Uh, we're going to leave it like that. Okay, if you're here uh, or if you watch these. <laughs> Ow. I did nothing. Um, but yeah, that's our community one there. But it doesn't have the mineral tree. So I was dabbling in create on that. And I'll pop over. I'll probably show the quick short that I have. It's probably going to be attached to this. Um, I accidentally broke that create world by uh, deleting some card contraptions. So yeah, I think that's that's it for today's episode. Uh, it's probably going to be only about 20 minutes this episode, but I think I did a lot of work. Um, Greg Tech can be tough to show in a, uh, what's the word for it? To show in, I think, a fun way. It can get really boring if I just show you the crafting. So hopefully the little um, time lapse went well. And also uh, I did want to point out that I got this really cool gear from Volt. Um, we did some exchange for polyethylene and whatnot, and he helped me get geared up proper. It is a little bit speedy on the feet, so if you see me running too fast or whatnot, let me know if it makes you dizzy. I have mixed feelings at the moment. And he also got me a really great shovel and um, also a separate pickaxe. And I just recently traded with him for what I called the, I wanted a mid-tier pickaxe. So I have one that I can get through stuff without breaking uh, everything around me while I build. So yeah, well, thank you for coming to my episode uh, here on my Gravitas 2 Let's Play. And again, I play on Pilpo's SMP. Uh, we have fun here. <laughs> Gosh, that's a YouTube. I know I know exactly who that, that call out is from. But uh, yeah, if you're interested at all, it is through his Patreon and he has several different tiers of uh, membership. The first one starting at a dollar, I believe. And yeah, we're, we're always happy to see folks, but also you can just pop up on Discord. Um, 
if you join his Discord, you can actually have a chat with those of us who are in here. All right. Well, thank you much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.